I'm a little nervous, okay. Happy belated Halloween. As you can see, I'm in my Jack Skellington onesie to be festive because Halloween was the day I was supposed to post this video. I have no specific order or notes for this video. I just pressed record and I'm going to wing it. Let's, let's do my intro first. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, lovies. My name is Tazaya, but you can call me Tazzy. Welcome or welcome back to my channel. Originally, I was waiting to film this video. I'm gonna be quite honest, I had this video idea when I first started my channel. And at first I was in this for the money. I'm gonna be quite honest with you, I was in this for the money. But me discovering that this is my passion, I decided to just, you know, go ahead and post this video because <laughs> fuck it, we ball. <laughs> Also, Mary Mouser, who y'all may know from Cobra Kai, years ago when she posted her video, she was a big inspiration for me posting my video. Kept on focusing on T-Bunny, so I had to switch angles. Sorry. I'm sorry. I love you, but I'm kind of telling a story and I needed to focus on me. Thanks. This is another serious talk, but I'm here to bring comedic relief, hopefully, because spoiler alert, I cry. <laughs> I'm gonna try not to get emotional during this video, but I just feel like I am. Okay, my name is Taziah Cuthbert and I am a type one diabetic. I feel like we're in group therapy, like, oh my God, I am so dramatic. Like, hi, Taziah. <laughs> also, I almost died last year. Let's talk about it. Let's start from the beginning. Way back in 2005, my mom and I were living in Florida and there were like small things that were happening with me that my mom started to notice were weird and she just took note of it i would complain of my fingers and toes having a tingling sensation the best way i could describe it is like millions of tiny needles poking me all simultaneously it didn't hurt it just felt weird and then also as a four-year-old apparently eating a whole can of chef boyardee was abnormal like damn mom what if i was just hungry so my mom took note of that because I started to eat the whole can instead of the half can that she would usually give me. I was a small child and always had a small frame, so she also noted I was losing weight. These are all symptoms of diabetes. I turned five, December 15th, 2005. Six days later, my mom had to take me to the hospital. I started complaining about the tingling again, so she took me to the hospital and I vividly remember pulling up to the hospital. I don't remember my diagnosis. I just remember having my own room, the nurses having to prick my finger and I hated it. It was painful for me. I like had this internal hatred for the nurse who always had to prick my finger. I vividly remember her smiling at me and I would just look at her like... It was around Christmas. So I remember they had played this recording of Santa sending a special message to me. And then I forgot how long I was in there, but I think I was released before Christmas. While we were checking out, there was a big Christmas tree right by the checkout desk and the receptionist let me pick out a gift. They had a whole bunch of gifts under the tree. So they let me pick out a gift. And I still remember that gift. It was a purple jump rope that I kept for years. So I don't remember much from when we first got home. After my diagnosis, I had a lot of restrictions and started eating and drinking a lot of sugar-free stuff. But from what my mom has told me, she was really scared to do anything involving my diabetes. So she had a friend do it for her because I wasn't able to do it myself. You know, at five, five is pretty young. Mama already getting emotional. After my diagnosis, my mom found a really great doctor that I am still so thankful for today. His name was Dr. Bernard. Very grateful for him and how safe he made me feel. I just looked him up. Apparently he's 59 now and he still has his practice, of course. I truly hope that man is doing well. Alongside my Gotti, he felt like the father I wish I had. I don't remember much from my childhood, but I do remember I learned fast how to prick my fingers and give myself insulin. I was still five or six when I learned, okay? I was being a big girl. <laughs> Before all this new technology, we had to manually prick 
my fingers and then i would have to give myself shots my spots that i would give myself shots were for the most part i started off doing it on my arms like right here on my arms and then i started bruising and getting hard spots so then i switched to my legs started bruising there as well i eventually learned to alternate between my stomach butt and my thighs i never went back to my arms to anyone who saw me and didn't know that i had diabetes it just kind of looked like i was getting abused at home because the bruises were so bad i ended up being homeschooled shortly after my diagnosis and my homeschool teacher is also a diabetic her name is miss brown i'm sorry i'm so rude i didn't say that which was a blessing because she knew exactly what i had to do and how to make it fun for me i remember she would make me run up and down the drive way and i thought it was fun but she was doing that because my blood sugar was high and physical activity brings your blood sugar down and i didn't know it at the time but of course i realized that now i saw it as a game so i had no problem doing it but try to ask me to do that now and i will laugh in your face like who is running to bring down their blood sugar not me wrong bitch <laughs> so while I was in living in Florida, my blood sugars were doing well. My A1C was at the normal range that it was supposed to be. Okay, I didn't say what an A1C is. An A1C is a blood test that you have to take that measures your like average blood sugar levels over the past three months for the most part. And then everything changed when we moved here to Georgia. So fast forward to 2010, I was in fifth grade. I was still doing pretty well. My doctor here <laughs> had the same name as my doctor back in Florida. There was a lot of personal stuff going on and I wasn't looked after or being checked up on when it came to my diabetes stuff because personal and family issues that I'm not going to talk about. I was left to fend for myself sounds harsh, but like literally fend for myself. I had to take on a lot of responsibility. There we go. That's something I can say as I got older. So I was nine when I moved here for the first couple of years. Everything ran smoothly. And then I believe when I got to high school, that's when things started to take a turn. Back in Florida, I felt really comfortable with my diabetes. I went to a private school in third grade and I remember my teacher gave me this project to do, just me, where I got to research and talk about my diabetes, which made me feel noticed. I guess. I was also still young, so I didn't feel too different. But as I got older and once we moved to Georgia, I started hanging out with friends outside of home and I started to feel different. I remember in fifth grade, there was one other person that I know of who had diabetes as well. So I was fine fifth grade year. Like I said, high school is when things took a turn. We didn't have a nurse. I think that was like the main issue. I didn't have a nurse to take me accountable for stuff. While I was at school, it was all on me when I got to high school and I just started to neglect taking care of my diabetes. <laughs> you are not going to cry. I just started to feel different and like an outsider. Anytime I would hang out with friends outside of school or just do anything in school, I didn't want to take the time to stop and go to the bathroom and check my blood sugar and do my insulin. It just felt like it took so much time out of my day and I just felt like I was missing out anytime I had to stop and do anything diabetes related. So basically the FOMO was so real and for no reason because what was there to miss? Like it literally took me five minutes to do everything I needed to do, which I guess was everything to me. Excuse my voice, I'm trying not to cry. Girl, let it out because it's coming. So when I was supposed to be checking my blood sugar or doing my insulin, I just didn't do it. And as I went to my doctor visits, you know, normally you're supposed to go to the doctor at least like twice a year. I can't remember if it was during high school or after high school, they had to start seeing me every three months because my A1C started to raise above normal levels. I was trying my best. I was still doing it, doing what I could for the most part. If I would hang out with people, I would let my blood sugar get high and then I would wait until I get home to do my insulin, which is so bad because I was letting my blood sugar be high for practically the whole day. And that's so bad for my 
organs <laughs> so high school ended college started i was 17 when i started college i was in the dorm my first year so i was on my own like for real on my own because i was not home i had even more responsibility that's when i kind of started neglecting it more i also got depressed after my first year of college so that contributed to my overall mental state during all of this and like i said i still had to go and do my checkups with my endocrinologist and i was lying to them people and my mom saying that i was doing everything that i needed to be doing and my mom watches my videos now so if she sees this hi mom sorry i was lying a lot about this stuff back then and it got to this point where nothing was getting better all they could really offer me was you know a serious talk that i hated having because it was so quiet <laughs> and i just felt ashamed but i wasn't willing to do anything about it and so what all the doctor and the nurse could offer me was therapy <laughs> and i was so against it i was like no i know i can do better but i don't need therapy to do it like this is on me a therapist can't help me i should have went to therapy <laughs> that's not funny they also offered the pumps but back then it was just a tube and i did not want the tube for years they had offered me you know chances to go to therapy they gave me the business cards the phone numbers and i was like no i'm not doing therapy no then i remember one day i thought i was ready to get my life together and so i had called it was after business hours though so i had ended up calling a number that they gave me and i had to leave a message because they weren't in office now i don't know if i just didn't see their call or they never called me back but i never heard anything from them that was my attempt to get better and it just <laughs> didn't work out what's funny is i didn't want to do therapy then but ask me if i want to do that now yes ma'am sign me up I'm there at what time? So I'm still going days, years without doing anything to get better. And I remember before my grandfather passed a couple of years ago, they diagnosed him with late onset diabetes. And as a result, they had to cut part of his leg off. And I just remember visiting him and I just couldn't look at it. And you know, after seeing all of that, I just still, didn't do anything to take care of myself and my diabetes so a few years ago they had started prescribing me pills because i have high blood pressure it's a lot better now <laughs> but i was like around 20 21 when they started giving me those but it also runs in my family when mine came so early it was definitely a result of me not taking care of my kidneys of all the things that was happening to me with my kidneys failing on me a little bit and watching my grandfather go through what he went through it just didn't phase me because for some reason i just thought i was invincible turns out i'm not I got to say, I turned 21 and decided to find a new doc because, you know, I was still going to a pediatric endocrinologist and my new doctor made me feel like they actually cared. And I guess that's due to, you know, the close to five star rating that they have compared to the three star rating of my old doctor. Last year, I finally decided to try the pump, especially because technology has advanced and it's no longer like a tube that's connected to you it's a little device that is attached to you they gave me like one to try for a trial period and i fell in love with it and so i had asked if uh they could prescribe me more this was last year uh, in october so I was using the pump and then I ran out and mind you I didn't do anything when it ran out like I went right back to not taking care of my body because I was waiting for the pumps to come in the mail or be sent into my pharmacy and the pump was so convenient because it practically did everything for me which spoiled me a little bit not gonna lie but there were issues going on with my insurance and 
the pharmacy and the doctor uh, i don't know communication between them i don't know what what the fuck was going on but you know i kept on calling and it was like practically two weeks i was running on little to no insulin and i was still you know going out having fun you know it's october so it was around halloween and then i remember last year halloween was on a monday so gabby had came over that weekend and we went out we did haunted houses and everything my mom was also out of town so i remember sunday my mom was supposed to come back that night we had woke up and we were supposed to do something but i just didn't feel good i was tired and nauseous and weak and the only thing i wanted to do was sleep and gabby didn't want to stay with me and be my nurse rude so gabby was like okay i'm gonna let you get your rest and she left so she left and i rested and then i remember my mom coming home i remember i took a shower and then i remember i didn't have the energy to put clothes on so i just laid on my bed <laughs> naked and i don't remember much up until i was in the hospital now I've only been hospitalized a few times for my diabetes and I don't really remember why, but God did their big one and made sure this one would stick. I practically blacked out. I remember waking up in the hospital and it was Halloween day, Halloween morning. My eyes are closed because I'm over here trying to conjure up the memories that I suppressed or trying to suppress. And I remember seeing orange i think the nurse was wearing orange and she asked me do i know what day it is and it's really foggy she was like it's halloween and i remember saying happy halloween she also said she liked my nails which had scream on it i wish i took a picture of them and i'm so mad i didn't i don't want to talk about it i don't remember the rest of that day so that next day the tuesday i have found out i went into dka diabetic ketoacidosis let me tell y'all what it is a serious diabetes complication where the body produces excess blood acids known as ketones this condition occurs when there isn't enough insulin in the body it can be triggered by infection or other illness symptoms include thirst frequent urination nausea abdominal pain weakness fruity scented breath and confusion it is a serious complication that can be life-threatening and it is most common among people with type 1 diabetes the sty that i had you know from last year that i just had to recently get surgery to remove that was like really the first sign like i just read it's triggered by infection so when i had styes on both my upper and lower lid that was really the first sign that i was going into something and that was at the beginning of september when those both came i remember you know from the tuesday that i like fully woke up and was able to comprehend what was going on my mom gave me my phone that second day and my sleep schedule was so off so while she went to sleep all i wanted to do for some reason was watch scooby-doo so i literally during the nights that i spent in the hospital watched scooby-doo while she was asleep in the chair next to me i was in the icu because if my mom would have waited any longer to bring me to the hospital i would have been in a coma a diabetic coma i'm just so glad that my mom came home that night and was able to take me to the hospital but also i was so upset with myself on how i let myself get to that point because like i said i just thought i was invincible nothing major was happening to me so i was like i'm fine nothing's gonna happen and then i ended up in the hospital I haven't told many people this story. The one friend that was there for me during that time was Gabby. We have each other's location. And so I remember, you know, she was checking on me because she knew I wasn't feeling well when she left my house. So she was checking on me and saw that I wasn't answering the phone. And so she checked my location. So I was in the hospital <laughs> and was blowing my mom's phone up, <laughs> making sure I was okay. And I was just charged, I think, Wednesday or Thursday. First of all, they wouldn't let me eat. <laughs> I didn't eat for like three days. At first, I wasn't allowed to drink water, I think. They only let me eat ice. I had these tubes connected all of my arms to my chest. 
I still have bruises from the needles. They would, the lab people would come in like every hour <laughs> and take my blood for what? I don't know. And we have to pay for that? Why? <laughs> I felt like Tori in that one episode of Victorious where they had to keep drawing her blood and she was weak like again. <laughs> it's faded, but there's, I still have marks from the needles that they stuck in me a lot. <laughs> throughout the day the day i was released gabby literally drove you know we live over an hour away from each other so she <laughs> literally drove to come and see me and i appreciate her so much because nobody else noticed unless i told them which you know is not on them it's not i do have other friends but you know they got their own shit going on and they weren't checking my location like gabby was like obsessively no i'm kidding <laughs> while i was in the hospital i forgot who called but they finally called and said that my pump was ready to be picked up at the pharmacy which was so convenient that i was waiting for two weeks to get this pump and then all of a sudden y'all hear i'm in the hospital and now it's ready and we picked them up right after we got out you know i promised myself and I promised my mom that I would do better. Especially because at that point, my A1C was at like a 14. Now it's a lot better. It's still a little high, but it's a lot better. I think I'm at a nine right now, which I'm so proud of myself for doing that because it's been years since I've been at a normal level, which is so bad for my organs. Here I am today, for the most part healthy and doing a lot better with managing my diabetes. Oh my God, I cried. I cried on camera, that's gross. I'm gonna watch this back like, bitch. <laughs> nah, love, I definitely cried again while editing. I'm very grateful to still be here today. And I'm very proud of myself for completely turning my life around after that. I don't wanna end up back in the hospital again. I'm still paying for that fucking visit. Like it cost my life to save my life. Damn. And I will never let myself get to that point again. It, it's not cute. Did not feel good. And I am not invincible. <laughs> I still get sad sometimes, you know, it's normal, but I'm no longer at that point where I just don't care to take care of myself or just not care about my life at all. If you watch to the end, thank you for watching and listening. I need to get that out because I haven't talked about it in a while. I want you to know I'm just at a much better place in life that will never happen again. <laughs> Let me stop before I start crying again. Thank you for watching. Bye. Bye.